Shang Man. Um, his name is Joel Mark Wells, and he went missing from Hazard, Kentucky, in Perry County in 1994, and he has never been seen since. And I wanted to give a little history about this story. Um, let me, I'm going to go to the website, Unsolved Appalachia. I, I read a lot of their posts, and they also have a Reddit thread, and I have been in contact with this author, Riddles in the Dark, uh, who writes for this page, and um, they cover a lot of stories from eastern Kentucky, a lot of the same stories that I talk about, and I do not want anyone to think that I'm stealing their work, but I'm quoting their work, so I just wanted to say that. Um, from the website Unsolved Appalachia, on the extremely cold night of January 15th, 1994, 21-year-old Joel Mark Wells and some friends were hanging out at the Black Gold Shopping Center in Hazard, Kentucky. An argument broke out between them, and Mark decided it was best to walk away. Apparently, Mark walked down the hill a little uh, ways to a Burger King. Employees that were there at the time said that they were locked up for the night and in the process of cleaning up when they heard someone frantically banging on the doors. It was Mark Wells, and he gave them the impression that he was in distress, almost like someone could have been after him. They called the police, who showed up a few minutes later, but by the time they arrived, Mark was gone. Um, let me go in-depth a little about what happened prior to Mark's disappearance. The night before this took place, a gas station attendant was murdered. So people were terrified. I've read interviews with some of the people who were working at the Burger King, and they expressed how, how upset they were that they didn't open the doors, but they were so scared about the murder of this gas station attendant the night before that they didn't know what was going on, and they were afraid to open the door. Instead, they called the police, who did come out, but Mark had ran away, and he seemed to be really in distress and afraid. Um, so it was reported that Mark was seen a short time later in the Walmart parking lot asking people for a ride as they came out of the store. As far as I know, this was the last time that he was ever seen. I'm not certain of the timeline since no um, time has been given on any of the information that I found on this. Well, you could assume that if Burger King was closing up for the night, it was probably 1994, it was probably 10.30 or so, maybe 11. Um, after he was reported missing, police brought out dogs to see if they could track down his movements. They reported picking up his scent behind the, near the river behind City Hall, but a search of the water and land came back with nothing. Um, now, I'm looking at a map here. I, I'm kind of familiar with Hazard. I've been in Hazard several times, and while the Black Gold Plaza has changed quite a bit since then, the Walmart is no longer there. It is now in a different area. Um, looking at this map, I kind of have an idea of where this took place at. And City Hall, he would, he would have had to have crossed the um, highway. So if he was frantic and running on foot, or did someone pick him up and take him over there and drop him off? Is that why they picked up his scent in that area? His body was never found, and no traces of him other than his scent from the dogs it was January, keep in mind. The trees were bare. Um, had he, like some people said, maybe he fell into the water and crawled out and lay there and froze to death. Would they not have found his body? Uh, if his body washed down the river, would they not have found it later? Um, I've read some theories that maybe 
Mark saw something that night in regards to the gas station murder, and he was killed because they didn't want a witness. Police investigated that theory, but said there was really no evidence to back that up. Um, what was Mark arguing with his friends about that night? Why did he appear to be so panicked at the Burger King? Why was he asking for a ride in the Walmart parking lot? And did he get a ride? Why would he possibly have been on the riverbank? As far as I know, there has been no more um, information, really, over the years. His family believes that he was murdered. In interviews that they've done, um, they believe that he was murdered. They probably don't go into too much detail about who they think did it personally. I think maybe he might have met back up with some of these friends that night. Whatever they were arguing about, you know, friends get into little spats and arguments. Were they arguing over a girl, money, or something like that? But what could it have been to the point that that someone would have killed him? So on the website Name Us, um, he is listed as missing person 7013. At the time he went missing, he was 21 years of age, 6 foot tall, and 160 pounds. He had brown hair, brown eyes, and um, he was white. Um, he was... Um, his hair was shoulder length down almost to like his shirt collar. He had a mustache. Um, now his eyes were blue, rather. Um, I correct myself. At the last time he was seen, he was wearing blue jeans, a blue flannel shirt, a blue denim jacket, and a green cap with a marijuana plant insignia on it. He was wearing green and tan hiking boots. Back Trails brand. And that's really all that is listed on that website about him. Um, see if I see anything that I had to say about that story anyway. The man has never been seen again. I don't know if the police interviewed any of his friends that were out with him that night or if any of them had talked about this to any of their family and friends. Uh, like I was saying, his family in interviews that they had done later, said that they do believe he was murdered uh, because he would not have just run away. He would not have just gone off and not show back up, you know. Um, if I can find anything else about this story, I will read this real quick and try to wrap this video up. This is from a website called Uncovered. Joel Mark Wells, 21 years old, vanishes after he walked away from friends after a disagreement. A Burger King employee made a 911 call to report a man frantically banging on the door and in distress. The man quickly took off running toward the bypass near Kentucky 15 in Hazard, Kentucky. What happened to him is unknown. This case is an unusual one because it was clear he was seeking help moments before he disappeared. Um, I'm really afraid right now to click on anything else because of the... Here's the timeline of events. In, on January the 14th, 1994, on, the evening, on that evening, a gas station attendant was killed. The next night, Joel gets into an argument with his friends. He runs to the Burger King, bangs on the door. No one lets him in, but they call the police. He is last seen in the parking lot of Walmart nearby where he is trying to get someone to give him a ride. Um, later, police dogs were able to pick up his scent um, on the riverbank across the highway from where he was last seen. And that's pretty much everything on that. On that. Um, I was looking to see if I could find anything from family or friends, maybe an interview or anything like that with his, you know, any of his um, I'm going to jump to Reddit real quick. I can usually find some pretty good information on Reddit. 
um, from the Reddit thread, unsol Unresolved Mysteries. What we do know is that on the day, um, the day leading up to his disappearance, uh, a man was killed at a gas station nearby. This had rattled the community, which is the reason that the Burger King employees gave for not opening the door. Um, and following his disappearance, information is sparse. Um, I don't know if it names uh, any of the people who were with him that night, but it does say that the employee at the Burger King was named Brian Adams. He was um, exiting the kitchen when he saw Joe running towards Kentucky 15 bypass. He called the police and told them what he had seen and about the man coming to the door. January the 16th, Joel does not return home and his sister begins to worry. She reports him missing, missing to the Hazard Police Department. On January the 23rd, police send out canine units and they track his scent to the river behind the city hall area. This is... Um, the, where the case stands today, there's very little information on this case, and as far as we know, there have been no arrests. Joel came from a large family, and he was one of 14 children. Um, he, had, he was a father to two young sons. Um, he loved life, he loved his boys, and he was always funny and full of life, says his sister. Um, now, what I had kind of been searching for on here was anything about interviews with any of the people who he supposedly was with that night. I'm sure that his family knew the friends that he hung out with, and I'm sure somebody um, would be able to say maybe they had talked to him earlier in the night. I was just hoping to maybe find a little bit more about if anyone had spoken to his friends. Now I'm going to read one more website and then I'll wrap this up because I want to move on to the story of the man who was murdered at the gas station the night before this. And the reason why some people thought that the people at Burger King were so afraid to unlock the door when this guy comes running up. Maybe he knew someone who worked there. So what they were doing up before before this argument broke out and what was this argument about? Did police interview these friends afterward? And, you know, really, that's all there really is to this. Let's see. Some unidentified remains were found in Hazard, Kentucky. Skeletal remains were found in a wooded area on November the 18th, 2019. But there's nothing here to say if they ever said that it was him. And I've not seen anything about that. This is really all that it says about this. And um, I'm going through some comments on... Um, web sleuths to see if there's any comments that might, you know, make sense or anything like that. Um, I appreciate anybody who stuck around and watched. I know this case didn't have a whole lot of information behind it. It's just sad that he left behind these two young boys. Um, Twenty-eight years ago. Um, they would be, you know, probably 30 now, 31, something like that. They, you know, as far as I know, there's been no update. I'm going to look into that, uh, the remains that were found, and see if there's anything on any of the ha local Hazard Kentucky uh, websites about that. But as of right now, this is where this case stands. I hope you'll come back and watch my next video. I'm going to talk about this other case that happened the night.
prior to this. I don't know if there's any relation to the two cases, unless someone in that group of friends maybe knew about this, who did this murder, and I don't know. I don't think that there is. I don't know if the police ever questioned that, but I don't know. I just hope maybe someday his family will get closure, you know. Thanks for listening.